missing dates back to as early as um, 18, I think it's 1896, when it was a part of the first modern Olympics. It's one of those original sports, which includes track and field, as you know, swimming, etc. Locally, we've just spent is relatively young in Jamaica, maybe two, maybe about three years, three, four years now. Um, I actually am a part of the Jamaica Fencing Federation, um, which is a national body for fencing here. Um, they're trying to promote fencing both locally and pushing Jamaica to compete internationally. Outside of that, I also work with the Kingston Fencing Club, which um, locally we're trying to spread fencing uh, within schools locally. So trying to de develop a league, so to speak. The Ministry of Health is pushing in terms of activity as Jamaicans are getting a little bit more lazy for want of a better word. Um, we're getting bigger, eating more fast food and etc. Um, fencing is another activity outside of the norm. Um, I mean, traditional sports that people kind of tend to gravitate to in Jamaica is football, um, cricket, etc. Um, fencing is another avenue which we can take part in, which as Jamaicans we have a lot of natural ability going forward. With fencing, it's only natural that we gravitate towards swords. Um, as kids, everybody grows up remembering sword fight or stick fight or whatever in Jamaica. So I think it's definitely something that can be um, used to curb and create um, young kids' minds in that respect. And the sport itself use, utilizes three different weapons. Uh, usually persons choose one and they learn to master that. Um, some people will use multiple, multiple weapons. In this instance, what we've demonstrated here today is a saber, is a saber weapon, which is a slashing weapon. Also, we utilized uh, the epee, which is a pointed weapon. Uh, the third weapon, which wasn't shown today, is a foil. Each one has its perks. Um, generally, the, the look of the weapon is different. Uh, also, the target area on each weapon is different as well. The target areas are primarily the torso for saber, including the arms and the mask and the head itself. Um, with epi from your toe to your head, it's all included, everything is included in that. It's usually seen as the purest form of the sport, um, where if you, if, you had a real, if you had a real pointed weapon that could draw blood, it would, it would count wherever you hit a person. There wouldn't be any rules where that comes into play. And with foil, it's similar to saber, where it's a torso up, except the arms are not included. For the most of the average, People who start fencing, it's, I get to hold a sword, it's really cool. Why not? Um, for me, they were recruiting people for the team and they were taking people who had never had experience before. So I jumped on that opportunity because I've never imagined myself fencing, and, but I don't like letting opportunities pass. A friend just asked me to come to his club, my friend Nathan, who started our fencing team and I just showed up because it sounded interesting. It was a good decision. I really love the sport now. I like the mental aspect because it's kind of like boxing. It's like chess, so you're kind of trying to plan out what your opponent's going to do before they do it and try to predict how they're going to react to what you do. So that kind of thing I really like a lot. Um, and also it's good exercise. Fencer start about, can start from seven, seven and up. Um, there's, also a senior, there's also seniors fencing. Um, which takes people up to usally about 70. Um, and generally speaking, it's a, as I say, from a health perspective, if you have people that are 70 fencing, you can definitely tell that it's something that's healthy. Um, when you're at that, at, at that older level, you're not necessarily moving as fast, but you still have the basic skills of movement of the blade and your footwork. From the younger kids' perspective, it's really about developing their motor skills, uh, balance, as well as coordination for movement. At that earlier age, you know, things are a little bit not so, not so straightforward. Um, but at the younger age, we start them off with activities that surround that. And then later on, when we get them a little bit more coordinated, we can move them on to, to handling the weapons. Anybody can hold a blade on the fence, whether, even if you are disabled, there is wheelchair fencing as well. Um, if you're left-handed, I'm a lefty. You can fence. If you're right-handed, you can fence. There's really no no limitations right when it comes to this sport if you really want a fence we can find a way for you and i'd love to see this sport being supported by our country being supported by our government being supported in our schools i'd love to see parents supporting their kids at tournaments 
Uh, I'd love to see everyone having their own equipment. We don't have to borrow equipment. Or we all have our own strips, our own facilities. And everyone knows that's a fencing strip. Maybe you don't do fencing, you don't know the rules of the sport. Like not everybody knows the rules of boxing or the rules of rugby. But you know, when you see the sport, you can tell this is XYZ sport. And I'd like to see fencing being recognized as a sport that Jamaicans do. It also provides a lot of diversity. A lot of people focus too much on the sports that are already big when there's room for development in other fields, which we could be great at because we're already great at football. We're already great at running and all track and we're already good at that kind of stuff. So it just leaves room for us to get good at other things. And, um, you know, people who take up fencing have the opportunity of getting scholarships and going away to other countries and having new experiences so for individuals it's good development um, but like i said for the whole country it's good exposure and uh, you know it just lays the groundwork for future generations and makes it easier for people in the future outside of that we have to develop our coaches locally um, there have been several opportunities for coaching clinics and so on overseas um, we're not always able to meet to meet those requirements um, in terms of being able to, to send coaches to attend those events, those training sessions. Um, because naturally, the more coaches we have is the more we can develop the sport and more, more persons can be trained. Well, I'd hope that uh, every major university would have a, a team of at least 20 people, I'd say. Um, I'd like to be leading the University of the West Indies team. Um, and I'd like for us to be sending more people to international tournaments for training and stuff like that because the pool here is so small that you kind of end up fencing the same people over and over so you just learn how to beat those people but you're not learning how to get better so we need experienced fencing more experienced people than ourselves so we can get better we need money we need better facilities because as you can see we're fencing in a squash court which is not the best but we're making do you know we're happy with what we have but we could have more five-year plan um, the idea is to develop the coaching develop, um, bring it to schools. Uh, there's international initiatives in terms of building fencing within the school systems. Um, we're going to be focusing on that for the next three to four years, developing through the schools um, to a level which we can have more competitions and we can afford to send more, more fencers overseas to compete. Um, one of the fencers here today um, will be competing at the CAC Games in Colombia yeah, at the end of July. Um, that's the Central American and Caribbean Games. This is my first experience doing something internationally and I would love to spiel it out and see how I do. Um, I would love to pursue this if that outlet again presents itself. But that's what this year's event is going to be for us. Uh, we also have fencers from overseas um, of Jamaican heritage who are also going to be competing. Outside of that, next year we'll be looking at events like a Pan Am Games as well as ultimately Tokyo 2020. If anyone's interested in joining fencing, they can shoot an email to the Kingston Fencing Club at gmail.com. And uh, UE's team is also looking to accept outsiders as well. You're going to have to pay a membership, but well worth it. Mm -hmm.